Okay, let's make a start. Wade, coming through loud and clear? Yes, sure. Okay, let's make a start. It's 10 a.m. First of all, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all of our delegates and attendees today for what is our Star to M uh, webinar uh, in this incredible time of COVID-19 around the world. Um, it's been a wonderful opportunity to extend the use of new technology. So this is the first of what will be a series of webinars where we would like to invite all of our delegates and partners and users around the world to take a, uh, a tour and an experience through StarTWIM. So today, the first in our series is introducing StarTWIM and how to maximise reporting with StarTWIM. Just a brief statement and an acknowledgement of country and in the spirit of reconciliation, StarTWIM does acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples today. So welcome. For those that are not familiar, my name is Michael Walker. I've been with the business now some 13 years and I'm Head of Global Sales, Marketing and Digital. And it's my absolute privilege and honour to uh, host today's session. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Mr Wade Evans, Wade is our product, project and solution managers looking after our aviation and our digital platforms and has played a really key role within the StarTWIM business. And alongside Wade today, we have Miss Priyanka Naidu. Priyanka is our technical product coordinator uh, working across our aviation and digital portfolios and has extensive use and experience with StarTWIM. So we'll get started. In terms of background, just really wanted to sort of set the scene today in terms of what it is and what's driven our business, Sealight uh, and the Avlight Group, in terms of developing Star to Wem. So I've certainly been with the business um, a long period of time, had a lot of experience around monitoring, uh, working with you know, those distributed fixed assets that many of you might be operating, owning, maintaining in your networks. We've certainly seen that industry trend towards reliable monitoring control. Uh, it's become a really key key tool in the arsenal of asset owners and operators in terms of ensuring availability, first and foremost, and provision of service, but then secondly, being able to really manage and more effectively, efficiently manage costs. So things such as real-time alarming, critical data capture and analysis, being able to understand your service availability metrics, that has been a constant, and it's a trend that we've seen strengthen. Certainly the introduction of technology, and if we think about traditional asset management tools like your big SAPs and oracles, we've seen now through industry and the use of technology, digital asset tools such as Startwim that we're introducing today now be tailored to meet those specific needs and industries like the global transportation industry, aids navigation, be that in the marine world or the fixed aviation or obstruction or heli, we've seen that real strong trend to understand one, service condition, current provision of service. Then, then secondly, you know, what is the status in terms of the maintenance cycle? What was the last maintenance cycle? Third, we've had a lot of experience with using traditional cellular uh, networks such as telemetry over the originally the 2G network, more recently 3G, 4G and today 5G. And we've seen real challenges there around managing obsolescence, mixed networks, understanding what's the correct SIM card, versus data versus voice and service coverage. So all of these sort of challenges, if you will, or industry trends is what really drove us to say, well, how can we continue to evolve our business, transform service, and hopefully add value back to our clients and their operations. So introducing star to m it's a new business venture, star to m Limited, and it's a wholly owned subsidiary of the c -like group of companies. And it's been, uh, incorporated to act as our really two things. One, it's our exclusive telecommunications provider in terms of that transmission of data. I'm going to speak to that in a moment when I introduce um, the satellite technology that supports our traditional GSM. And then secondly, it's the software, cloud-based software, portal platform, mobile app that lies at the heart of Star2M. 
For those that are interested, STAR2M represents satellite to machine communication or machine to machine monitoring control. And essentially what we're talking about is four discrete feature sets in the core platform. First and foremost is asset monitoring in terms of the health and status, asset control, asset management, and rounding out the package is asset maintenance. And that's going to be a focus today when we drill into maintenance and reporting. Just to touch on the overview, it's all about connectivity. It's all about having your remote device and being connected. And we're absolutely delighted to continue to strengthen and deepen our partnership with Iridium Satellite Communications, the world's only truly global satellite communication company. We chose that organization, that platform, that partner for that global assurance in terms of it is the world's most robust low earth orbit L-band satellite network in the world. So for us, it's all about reliability of service in terms of carrying that data. We also support cellular and we certainly also um, support IoT or the Internet of Things and looking at other complementary technologies. So that's about the connectivity. It's about getting that device that you own, support, service maintain, and then having that connected. And then that's connected up into a flexible modular system architecture. So it's completely self-contained, completely secure, hosted on Microsoft Azure, cloud-based. And so a user with a web browser or a mobile device is able to access this portal, this system from anywhere in the world. In terms of the, the core system, it's a user business centric model. So it's configurable based on any given asset base. So this can be connected to traditional marine or aviation assets or extending that out further. You have an ability to be able to customize or create your own assets. It's completely agnostic in terms of vendor or manufacturer. So if you're operating um, other third party original equipment, you have the ability using this open scalable tool to be able to configure and support, maintain and monitor those assets. Just touching on the commercial overview or the business model, if you will, first and foremost, it's about your hardware and then having that device connected. That device needs to be connected and reporting to somewhere and that is the star to m portal. And that's where we introduce this concept of a subscription or the software. It's an asset based subscription model. You've got the four but discrete but complementary feature sets all come as standard. We then support that over the lifetime. We're deeply committed to this business in terms of the development roadmap. And we'll touch on that at the back end of today's session. And that then supports software updates, patching, all of our hosted infrastructure, our ongoing support team and the like. So once we've got our hardware, we've then selected our subscription package. You're then subject to whether you're using satellite or GSM for your connectivity, you then have the option to then uh, pick a data package that suits your business needs. And finally, if you require help or assistance, star to m stands ready to support you with commissioning services. A little bit difficult at the moment with COVID-19 and our inability to travel face to face. We certainly can stand ready to support you 24 seven from around the world from our operating sites and locations. And that can be extended in terms of uh, setting up your system and looking at your architecture you know, you might be looking at star to m as a system, as part of a larger system. We can walk you through that journey. We can also then support with activation, data migration, training and rollout. Now, just touching in terms of the hardware, for those that are curious, this is an image of the Iridium modem. We've taken that modem, and we've then integrated that into our product. So be that our aviation or marine portfolios, subject to uh, the product development life cycles, then we're all in the process or we're in the process of upgrading uh, our, our product portfolios to support that, including some really exciting developments around third party, be that uh, taking the Iridium modem and being able to connect it to any remote device. It's very small, it's been selected because it's ideal for short burst data, consumes very little power, very small, sits into just a fraction of the palm of your hand and it brings all of that connectivity up and across and into the global Iridium network. Just touching now on the data plans, very simply there's a choice of one way or two way plans. In essence, one way is when you want your distributed fixed asset or your remote asset, the thing that you're monitoring to report one way 
and you simply have a basic one-way or an advanced one-way depending on your operational need. Think of basic one-way as our traditional GSM proprietary system, if you're familiar with that, where that sends one text message once per day when your unit, be that a light or a lantern, wakes up. In addition to that daily status report of one message per day, you also then receive those real-time alert and alarm notifications. And that is standard across all of the packages. If you're looking for more data, more, more often, uh, because you might be managing a critical uh, aid or critical asset, we have two-way plans, and that's where we introduce the ability to then control. So think of one way as, as the traditional monitoring, and it's the unit reporting up into the portal, two-way where you introduce then the ability to talk down to the asset. And that gives the ability to derive your status reports as well as then run your controlled messaging. Basic two-way is simply batching, where all of the command messages that you might send over a period get batched together and sent. And if you're looking for an advanced two-way, you're receiving status report every 12 hours, you're getting those real-time alert and alarm notifications that are critical to understand your, the performance of your network. And then you have real-time control messaging. And so a user, if they're wishing to switch off um, their, their asset, might require that real-time control. That concludes the introduction, if you will, of the system. I'd now like to introduce Wade Evans, who will now start to introduce the reporting overview and talk in greater detail. Over to you, Wade. Thanks, Mike. Hi, everyone. So as Mike discussed, the start to -end platform itself, reporting is really a key component and a core functionality um, of the start to -end platform around asset monitoring um, and asset management. So it's obviously a core to start to end for a couple of reasons, mostly around its crucial uh, feature set relative to service availability, up asset uptime, and really asset health of the total asset pool. So with that in mind, uh, start to end has a pretty diverse range of reporting functionality. It's really broken into a few key feature sets, uh, which is listed there on the screen. So the first one is around real-time alarming and alarm logging. What this allows us to do is get immediate alarm information against asset, assets that are being managed and monitored, and then also log all that alarm information for historical viewing, for assessment at a later date, but also to give confidence around the alarm cycles um, and also around the alarm capture. Following on from that, we have detailed asset update capture. What this means is that on any of the asset information that's provided into the portal and into the platform itself against a given account is captured against that account. What that means is you can interrogate that data at a later date and it really allows and builds upon the reporting feature set for start to end. That then follows on with configurable alerting and reporting profiles. What this means is we're able to cater the reporting uh, of both alarm conditions and the general health report uh, on a daily basis to an organization or a business needs. It allows you to really cater and, and generate a flexible uh, profile against those conditions, um, which allows information to be distilled within an organization within a business um, as required and to the appropriate people to be able to action that information immediately. And finally, and critically, critically uh, we also contain maintenance report functionality to be able to generate uh, through life maintenance reports against the fielded assets in a physical location and be able to do health condition reports against those fielded assets. So obviously asset reporting is a crucial feature of any asset management platform and we've made it as customizable as possible uh, and completely customizable within the start to end portal itself. We're just going to run through those feature sets uh, each in a little bit of detail and give an overview of how they're captured within um, the start to end platform um, and how to utilize them within the start to end platform. So on this slide, you can see that the dashboard's displayed. Now, the dashboard is really a central user interface uh, for users uh, and operators of the start to end platform. And what that means is it gives you the, the high level summary of the health of the system. So as you can see here, uh, we've highlighted the active alarm uh, section of the user dashboard which is really critical and a really key component of the dashboard and the start to end platform itself. So what this means is that you can see in that component that's highlighted, uh, all the most recent active alarms are displayed for the entire asset base, um, most recent first uh, through the latest. This is just the subset that's shown at the dashboard, uh, which shows the most recent five alarms, um, which allows you to really see what conditions are occurring um, and action the most important ones first. So at this window, you can see there's a, a, a the high level information you can view. You can see the asset that's in alarm, the type of alarm condition that's experienced, 
and there's some icons on the right there which allow you to both view the asset at the map view as well as acknowledge the alarm. Now, star 2 m runs under a poly positive acknowledgement system. And what that means is that we don't automatically clear alarms. And that's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, we don't want to automatically clear alarms because that means that there's potential for the operators and users to not be notified of an alarm or miss an alarm condition that's occurred um, and not know they've had to action that alarm. Secondly, you only really want to acknowledge the alarm uh, once you've uh, investigated that alarm, distilled the information and made an assessment against that alarm condition whether that doesn't need to be actioned or it's actually been rectified in the field uh, based on sort of uh, alarm conditions and parameters and the investigation that's happened against that alarm condition. So from this menu, you can jump down further into the actual log information through uh, clicking the view active alarm sections of that modal window um, and we'll delve into that next. So this is a view of the detailed alarm log. So you can access it through the dashboard and it takes you down to the detailed alarm log. As you can see here, it contains all the very specific information around those alarm conditions. So it really gives you a detailed analysis of what those alarms are um, and, and how they've occurred. So uh, moving left to right, you can see that you've got the asset name. Uh, that's the name generated by the system, inserted by the user of that asset. Um, it's the alarm type that's occurred. Also, if it's associated with any asset group, that'll also be displayed here as well, because um, asset groups allow you to condense assets into uh, you know, uh, virtual and hierarchical asset groupings. So the asset, uh, the alarm type is listed here, which allows you to understand exactly what alarm conditions occurred against that asset. There might be multiple alarm conditions against a single asset, if a critical fault has occurred, and allows you to see exactly which alarms are currently uh, active or which alarms have occurred against that asset previously. Now at the top, uh, four units, you can see here uh, that there's a, those top four are unacknowledged alarms. So that's why they're displayed with the acknowledge button on the right um, and the map icon next to it. This screen also displays timestamp information. So it shows you when the alarms occurred. And then if the alarm has been acknowledged, it'll also have a timestamp against when it's been acknowledged. And what that allows you to do is know when the alarm uh, actually occurred, when it was monitored by the system, and when the system uh, was able to uh, interrogate it and understand that, that alarm conditions actually occurred. And then you can also see when it's been acknowledged by the users of the account. And that allows you to look back through history, understand when alarms have occurred, when they've been acknowledged, if they're reoccurring often, um, and what the time frame between those two components really are. Now, from this screen, you can obviously acknowledge the alarms if you've assessed those. Uh, either rectify them directly uh, or assess those as not a cr critical issue. You can acknowledge them. But you can also see where that alarms occurred in a physical sense or a geolocation sense by selecting the icon that's been highlighted there, uh, the little teardrop icon. And what that allows you to do is see where it's located in the map view. Um, so if we proceed on to the next page. Clicking that icon will take you to the map view, which provides you the geolocation of that asset. Um, so this provides you a physical sense of where that asset's located, which is really critical when you're operating on a large asset base. Uh, you need to understand which asset it is. Uh, you may not have a mental map of exactly what asset names associated with what physical position or geolocation. So the map view provides you that information. You can also see at the map view, there's a exclamation icon next to the, um, the asset icon. And what that means is that that asset is currently in alarm. And there might be multiple alarm conditions against it, but that asset is currently in has at least one alarm state. So then we'll move on through to the update section. So now we're looking at the updates. So we just went through the alarm conditions and how we report alarms and how we capture alarms. We also capture the general updates that flow through to the system. And by that, that's the monitoring messages that are sent from the asset to the platform and viewed through the portal. So in the bottom right hand corner, you can see a list of recent updates. This is once again, the most recent five updates across the entire asset base are listed here. Um, and then you can also view them uh, and also uh, delve deeper into them here. Obviously it lists the asset name and when that update occurred, um, and then you can delve deeper into this through the asset log. The other component that I wanna draw your attention to here is up the top of the screen, uh, across the, the, the primary uh, metrics across the top, the third from the left, where it says asset updates one of 32. Now this is a demo portal, so not all of those 32 assets that we set up as remote monitoring are reporting. Um, so that's why it says one of 32, but ultimately that's a very crucial metric there. So what that metric shows you um, is the total number of assets within your pool that are enabled as remote monitoring, how many of those have reported within the last 24 to 36 hours. 
What that allows you to do in a single snapshot is understand how many of your assets are actively reporting. And if they're not actively reporting, they're under a no communication condition, which could be because of a critical failure or some other reporting issue that's occurred and allows you to see that immediately as a snapshot. So we'll delve a little bit deeper into the update log itself um, and move on to the next page. So by clicking view updates uh, in the, on the dashboard, you can delve into the update log. This is similar to the alarm log where all the historical information is captured it's against the asset type when the update actually occurred. And then you can physically view on the right there underneath actions where that asset is. So you can view it once again in the map view. So you can always pull yourself back to the physical geolocation of that asset. But you can also click the eye icon and delve into a specific asset, uh, a specific message package uh, interrogation, which shows you all the data that was provided against that update. Um, the, all these update logs, both the update log and the alarm log, none of the information is ever purged. So the update logs consist and continue to exist uh, and house within the database um, for, for all time. So you're always able to look back at the original update you've ever occurred and be able to uh, interrogate the system for any updates or any alarm conditions that have ever occurred over the life cycle of the asset. So if we just jump into what clicking that icon looks like, um, it'll be a detailed assessment of the actual update that came through. So here's an example of what that uh, detailed update uh, information looks like. It contains all the electrical parameters, any of the other operational conditions against the asset um, and against the information that was provided. It's got the geolo geolocation information, operation mode, and what its current state is. So these packets are sent. They will look and vary depending on the uh, data or, or um, satellite monitoring package selected in terms of what is sent and how often it's sent. But this is the kind of information that's captured. And what this means is that you can delve into these individual updates if you're doing an interrogation of an asset and really find out what information is being provided to the portal. And this all, obviously all flows up and is automated into the platform in terms of the data against those specific assets. So that's the end of the uh, alarm log and update. Um, overview, and then I'll hand over to Priyanka to talk through asset profiles um, and the maintenance reports themselves. Thanks, Wade. Hi, everyone. Uh, so an important part of StartUM's reporting functionality uh, is its ability to send out customized notifications. And this could be in the form of real-time alerts to a particular asset alarm or a report of asset information. Now, both of these notifications can be sent to either one or multiple users. And this is done through the alerting and reporting profiles. So the image you can see here is of the alert profiles page. And this is accessible through the system configuration tab, tab in the left-hand side menu there. So this is essentially a list of all of the active alert profiles in the system. And all of these are completely accessible and can be edited at any time uh, just by clicking on the edit icon to the right-hand side there. So let's have a look at what an alert profile looks like. So if you were to click on the Add Alert Profile tab uh, up in the top right-hand corner of the previous image, you'd, you'd be displayed with this separate uh, model window here to create that alert profile. Uh, so this is the window um, which you would enter a name and description, and more importantly, using the alarms and assets fields there, you'd be able to select which assets and associated alarms you'd like to receive notification for. So what's helpful here is that you don't have to create uh, an alert or um, sorry, an alert profile for every single asset that you have. Um, you can add them all into a single alert profile all at the same time to make things uh, a bit easier. So to the right hand side there, you're able to select who receives these notifications. And this could be a single user or multiple users. And you can also choose to receive these alerts uh, via either SMS, email, or even both. So putting it all together in this example, we can see that the system is going to send out an SMS message and email to the chosen users whenever those selected um, assets trigger those chosen alarms. So if we go on to the next slide, we'll have a look at the reporting profiles. So these are similar to the alert profiles in that you're able to configure the system to send out customized notifications, but instead of alerting you to alarms, you'll instead receive a summary of asset information. So if you were to select that Add Report Profile tab up in the right-hand corner there, it would open up another modal window. And if we, um, if we can move on to the next slide, I'll show you what that looks like. So this looks very similar to the one we saw previously for the alert profiles, 
except here instead of selecting different alarms you're able to select exactly what information you'd like to receive from those selected assets there. So for this example here, we can see that this particular report profile will send out a report via email uh, showing the maximum voltage, charge, and flash ID for that particular asset that you see there. Uh, what's also helpful is that you're able to choose the frequency at which you receive these reports, and that could be um, on a daily basis or weekly, fortnightly, all the way up to quarterly if you so choose. So these alert and reporting profiles play an important part in making sure that uh, asset managers are constantly aware of the health status of their asset base. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide to go through the maintenance reporting. So the StartaWin platform itself consists of the web portal as well as the mobile application for iOS and um, Android devices. So the intention of the mobile app for StartaWin is predominantly for in-field usage, and this is the mechanism for rolling out field maintenance reports. So the whole idea of this is that when an engineer or technician goes out to the field to service an asset, they can upload all of the information to the StartaWin mobile application, generate a report from there, and then synchronize it back to the StartaWin web portal. All of these maintenance reports are completely accessible from the StartaWin web portal, and you'll be able to view all of the details um, against that maintenance report for that particular asset. So the image that you see at the back there is taken from the asset list in the StartaWim web portal. So if I were to jump into the first asset in that list by clicking on the asset details circled in red there, I'll be able to go to the reports tab, which is shown by the image at the front. And this will show me all the maintenance reports that have been uploaded from the mobile app for this particular asset. Uh, let's go over to the next slide to have a look at the view maintenance page. So the screenshot you see here is basically a complete list of every single maintenance report that's been uploaded for each asset. Uh, looking at the first report in the list there, we can see that it's titled six month visit. You can see the name of the asset there as well as the asset type. And you can also see the date and time that this report was uploaded from the mobile app. So to open a report, you'd click on the web report icon circled in red there. Uh, let's go on to the next slide to take a closer look. So every maintenance report is broken down into different sections that you can see in the images here. And you'll be able to click through the different tabs and view the different report details in each of them. So looking at the condition tab in the first image at the back, you'll be able to view details such as the overall asset condition, uh, any damage and fouling, and then moving on to the next tab in the second image there, you'll be able to see information specific to the asset type itself. So in this case, this asset is a marine lantern, so this is the information that's displayed. If this asset was a marine buoy, for example, or a pylon or battery instead, the information displayed here would be a bit different. Uh, the next image that you see there is of the maintenance tab. And this is where you'll be able to view what maintenance activities were carried out, uh, any follow-up actions required, as well as the next service uh, state. And then moving on to the final image at the front there, you'll be able to view any images or videos associated with that particular uh, maintenance routine from here as well. And then just looking at the bottom of the last image there, circled in red, you can also save the entire report as a PDF file by clicking on that Save as PDF tab there, and that will download a file for you to save uh, for your own records. Uh, so that concludes the reporting overview. Um, I'll now hand back over to Wade to talk about what's coming up next for Start to Win. Yeah, thanks, Priyanka. So we've got a, couple, a lot of exciting developments coming with Start to Win, and obviously the next uh, next major development is release 2.0, which is scheduled for August 2020 this year. That's going to include some uh, significant uh, upgrades to the system, including an update to the geographic uh, information uh, and through the mapping engine using Esri mapping. On top of that, we'll also be doing uh, user management changes to add greater control over who can see and change information inside your account. What that means is we're talking about roles and associations here where specific users uh, can be allocated to view specific assets. They can be uh, shown to view or access control specific asset groups. Um, so, you know, lots of flexibility around being able to allocate who can see what, who can modify what uh, within a given account um, across multiple users. 
Obviously, we also have further opportunities for partners and resellers to start to, to sell Star to M and push that through their channels. And then obviously we're going to be developing um, in the interim future, uh, so in the near future, um, some pretty significant new products to the market as well. Uh, those include a universal gateway, which is ultimately a protocol converter, allowing you to connect any third party device uh, back up to start to m as well as some standalone SATCOM uh, monitoring, low level monitoring devices as well to be able to connect uh, satellite monitoring uh, once again up to any device, uh, including both our existing product range and some third party devices on the standalone side as well. Thank you, Wade. And I guess um, we can add to that uh, some other exciting developments around the AV Oil 75, uh, the SL75 for Marine, uh, the SL155 family, um, and uh, some other developments that you'll start to see across the back end of 2020 into 2021. So thank you, Wade. Thank you, Priyanka. Thanks. That concludes uh, today's formal presentation. I'm now just going to go and open the chat function. Uh, question mode has now been enabled. So I'm now just going to attempt uh, to, uh, to read out some of these questions that's been captured uh, from the audience. So I'll just start with uh, a question from one of our users. So this is a question for Wade. Uh, how does Startwim tell me if my asset has moved from its set location, Wade? Yeah, so there's a couple of different uh, features within Startwim, and there's two predominant ones. Um, there's off-station alarming as well as watch circle alarming. So when we talk about those uh, two different features, um, they're both dependent. They provide the same level of information in terms of movement um, of an asset from its nominated position. They just do them in two different ways. So that's why we have both functionalities. So the off-station alarming is dynamic alarming based on the asset itself. So it has a, a dynamic position where it works out where its home position is, and then it moves within 200 meters of that position over a given time frame. you'll get an off-station alarm. Additionally, we also have the functionality within the star -to portal itself to set up a very tight, constrained watch circle of any nominated size that the user wants. So what that means is that that's post-processed, which means you can set it up in the portal uh, of a given static location, exact geolocation information for an asset group. If any asset within that asset group moves outside of that watch circle, even if it's just drifting outside of it, rather than an off-station condition, which is typically, say, a broken mooring or, or some uh, dynamic movement of the asset, it's just a drift issue, um, and that can also be alarmed through the watch circle alarming feature set. Yeah, thank you, Wade. I received another question uh, from a customer in Asia. How many assets can I upload to the system? Uh, Wade. Yeah, so it all depends on what subscription level uh, you have. Obviously, our model is based around asset counts, um, but there's no maximum number of assets you can add to the system. It's all just tiered to what subscription level you have. Um, but in terms of the number of users as well, it's an infinite number of users. So on an asset basis, it's based on what subscription package you have, um, and it'll be tiered either one to nine, um, you know, vice versa. Um, so it'll be structured upwards. Um, but in terms of number of users, which is a separate component, um, you've got an infinite number of users. There's no uh, seat count um, for start to Thank you, Wade. Uh, I've got a question uh, here for Priyanka. Um, Priyanka, just a short overview. Um, we didn't really touch on the, the mobile app today. So Priyanka, just a, a short uh, summary of the, how does the mobile app function? So the mobile app functions um, as a complementary application to the start web portal, uh, mostly for in-field usage, uh, as I said before. So you're able to communicate with your assets, um, change different parameters like the flash code, et cetera, um, and upload maintenance reports from there as well, which are all synchronized back to the start to web portal. Yeah, thanks, Priyanka. So just to add to that, we've obviously got uh, in the App Store, um, the Apple App Store, and also uh, the iOS Store, uh, we've got our traditional C-Lite Pro, which is for programming, but you can go and find uh, star to m for subscribed users. Download it there wherever you get your good apps. Uh, no problem at all. Elaine, welcome to today's presentation. As I said uh, at today's kickoff, we've got uh, participants from all over the world, which is incredibly exciting. And uh, we welcome Elaine from French Polynesia. I have a question now 
In from Chris, will the alarms log every time I have a rectified function? Question for Wade. Yeah, so if we're talking about rectifying the actual alarm condition itself, it won't auto clear, um, but it will log whenever you acknowledge that alarm. So we don't we don't um, purge any of the alarm information. It's always there. Um, and then if the issue exists and then clears by itself, it will still present as an alarm condition until it's acknowledged uh, by the user itself. Um, so yeah, it'll always log that information. Yeah, thank you, Wade. Uh, I have another question here. Um, can the geofence on the platform be configured for an individual asset rather than a group? I'll go back to you, Wade. Yeah, so the occupational alarm, which is dynamic on the asset itself, is obviously asset-based, um, based on the specific asset and, and produced by the asset. But in terms of creating the watch circle, or that geofence, it's done on an asset group level. And the reason for that is you need to be able to set a static location for any assets or any monitored assets within that group. But you can also always do it with one group to one asset. And what that allows you to do is set a watch circle for that specific asset itself. Um, but ultimately, uh, the structure of Stars Room is based around multiple assets within a group. Um, so even though they might not be monitored, you might have a buoy, a mooring, and then a lantern. Um, so the lantern would be the thing providing the uh, geolocation information. So if it moves outside of the watch circle, then you'll be alarmed. But the group itself is really has that static location. Um, so yeah, it's done against the uh, asset group rather than the specific asset itself. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Wade. The next question has come in from Chris. Can you carry out maintenance log from web portal? Wade. So currently the maintenance logs are synchronized to the web portal via the field app, um, but our development uh, in 2.0 will allow the user to be able to also conduct um, maintenance uh, reports from the web portal itself um, to actually be able to create those, those uh, maintenance reports from the web portal. Yeah, okay, Wade. Thank you. Uh, next question is, can I use the GSM and satellite platforms together in my asset groups? And which one of the two systems will operate best? Uh, yeah, so you can use a mixed network. You can have GSM and satellite across your asset base. Um, obviously, you wouldn't have GSM and satellite on a single asset um, unless you're monitoring different components of the same asset. Um, but you can have a mixed network. Now, obviously, our preference and definitely the most uh, high performing component is around satellite communication. The reason for that uh, versus traditional GSM network is because GSM is all land based. Um, you know, in remote locations, it does struggle, especially globally. Uh, there's lots of uh, locations where GSM um, is, is less than satisfactory around high availability and high reporting. So satellite really takes the edge there uh, where you can monitor from anywhere in the world, you get real time alarming, um, you know, you've got low latency um, and you can push a lot of data across the satellite network as well. Okay, thank you, Wade. Uh, the next question from uh, Rear Admiral Asif. Uh, in future developments, are we looking to receive the wind and tidal stream data from sensors installed on the buoys? Yeah, so it's certainly something we're investigating. Um, we haven't rolled it into a specific release at this stage, um, but it's certainly a feature set that we're looking at, um, and we'll certainly be looking at uh, rolling that into the baseline at some stage. Um, that'll be obviously utilising some of the other product that we generate around, say, our universal gateway fixture or our standalone SATCOM um, component um, to be able to monitor a, a, a suite of sensors uh, that can then be reported in start to end. But it's certainly something we're looking at. Yeah, so the short answer is, not today, but with the release of the Universal Gateway and being able to then aggregate those different data feeds, that's one method of transmission. A second might be uh, a future development, which I can talk to, is we're looking at an AIS module, which should be uh, bolted onto the platform in 2021. So users that might have uh, AIS connected uh, lanterns, and this is a marine application, would be able to receive uh, that via message eight and then have it then displayed on the portal. Correct. I have a question now from Elaine, a wonderful question. Do we plan on providing a multi-language user's manual in French? I'll answer that and the short answer is yes, Elaine. Um, we as a business, be that Avlight Systems, Sealight and Startwim are committed to supporting uh, as many users as possible. So we have a, a, a business policy, if you will, of uh, translating our core supporting documents, be that quick start guides, user manuals, and the all important data sheet 
in a combination of Spanish and French. And then uh, we're also supporting some Arabic translations as well for our Arabic uh, speaking customers. So it's not there today, Elaine, but it's certainly committed as an activity uh, to be completed to support our customers. Uh, I've got a question now in on leading lights. Um, and that is a marine application for those that are not familiar. Uh, the question from Chris, is there any talk about the SL48 and SL96 going to SATCOM? Uh, Wade, I can uh, speak to that one if you don't mind. Um, today we've traditionally got the, the GSM monitoring integrated into our leading lights and there's a couple of developments um, that are on the drawing board. Um, the first and the primary one will be to integrate our standalone satellite module, which is nearing completion and development. It should be rolled out in the coming, what would you say, Wade, estimate the next sort of 60, 90 days, uh, a yeah. number of solutions. So that'll be the quickest way to be able to connect, uh, connect that product. Then more broadly, uh, there is a, a roadmap of development uh, across both our marine and aviation portfolios that we're looking into and the SL48 and SL96 would fall into that category. But the quickest path to market will be utilising our standalone SATCOMS solution. That concludes our questions for now. I can just see one user is, um, is just, uh, was writing a question. So feel free to continue, uh, Rear Admiral. Okay, uh, interesting question. Uh, we have smoke candles in the submarine. Can we have a distress light fired from a submarine in distress and monitored on the surface? I'll hand that over to Wade Evans. <laughs> interesting application. Um, yeah, look, if we utilize day two-way communication through satellite monitoring, which is obviously instantaneous communication in both directions, um, we're talking about advanced the advanced satellite monitoring package here, then you can certainly send control commands. Um, we'd, we'd obviously have to build a solution around that application, um, how we would interpret that information in order to, to issue those sort of uh, distress signals. Um, but we could ultimately build a, you know, a solution, a catered solution um, to that application. Yeah, thank you, Wade. Uh, one final question, I can see a, uh, a delegate is typing. A couple of questions, in fact. Okay, uh, a question from a user. Uh, I'm not too sure what this one is. Um, will there be any further streams like this one or online training modules to be held in the future? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, we're really looking forward to this uh, platform and this engagement and, and another means by which we can speak with our customers. And so, yes, there's a series of these webinars that's going to be scheduled over the coming weeks and months. Then in addition to that, today's material is being recorded. It will be edited and then that will be made available uh, for all of our customers. Those that have attended today, if you'd like to watch back uh, the playback, and for those users that were unable to attend uh, in person today. Thank you for the question. And a question from Chris, will the LED operation hours be included in the R2.0 rollout? I'll just invite Wade Evans. Uh, no, so not at this stage. So 2.0 is very specific around what components are going to be rolled into it. Um, but further uh, detailed information around the assets is something we've def definitely scheduled in um, for the next release, which is R3.0, um, which is about building, uh, you know, asset specific monitoring capabilities, meaning that specific assets report different information. If you've got, um, you know, universal light source, for example, it reports different information to what our universal gateway wheel or, or a specific lantern. So it's definitely something we're looking at for the next release. It won't be in 2.0, um, but it's certainly uh, scheduled for 3.0. Yeah, wonderful, Wade. And on that note, I'd like to close today's webinar at 45 minutes. I would like to extend a really warm thank you to all of our delegates that have taken the time to engage with our marketing communication, register for today's event and, uh, and give up some of your valuable time. So we give great thanks 
And on behalf of Avlight Systems, Sealight and StarTwim globally, I'd also like to thank our wonderful team and I'd like to thank Mason Sugars uh, in the bunker and also Mariana Danuno, uh, Adam Ibsen and also Marianne Dutka in our global marketing team, we give thanks. Big thank you to Priyanka and Wade. And wherever you are today, please be safe and thank you for your ongoing support. Goodbye.